Yo, what's going on guys, it's Anton here. So today I'm going to show you guys how to build a website that uses the Discord uh, login OAuth 2 strategy. And basically what that means is you can use Discord to log into a website. So I'm sure you guys have seen lots of Discord bots that have their own dashboard where you can log in with your Discord account. This is done using OAuth 2. Okay, so uh, basically the idea is what we need is we need a web server or an API server that handles all of the authentication on the back end. Okay, so this is not going to be a Discord bot that we're building, but it's going to be an API that we're going to build out that's going to handle all of these, you know, authorization, authentication strategies, and um, and whatnot. Okay, so for example, let's say if I go over to uh, let's see. Uh, Azure.io. Okay. And this is a uh, Discord bot that I use for my server. I'm going to click on login. And notice how it's bringing me to this page. And once I click authorize, what's going to happen is on the back end, it's going to authenticate me and it's going to bring me to the successful page, which is the dashboard page. Okay, right now I think Ataja is uh, having some issues right now, so the dashboard isn't working, but you guys get the idea. And of course I can, uh, you know, log out as well. But anyways, so yeah, let's exit this out. So what we're going to be using is we're going to be using a framework called Express. Okay, it's a JavaScript web framework that allows you to build out APIs, handle requests, do a bunch of things. It's pretty awesome. So we're going to first create a new directory called let's call it discord o auth 2 and i'm just going to say discord auth 2 cd into the directory okay and we're going to just initialize our repository with express so we're going to open it up in visual studio code and let's just install express by doing npm install or npm i express Okay, awesome. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and just create a new folder. It's called source because I want to organize my code a little bit. So let me zoom in. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a file called app.js. Okay. And essentially what I want to do is I want to use Express to create a server that listens to requests, listens to HTTP requests on a certain port. Okay, so ideally, when you make any web request on your browser, you're basically making an API request or you're making an HTTP get request. So let's say, for example, if I click on your profile on my GitHub account, I am making an HTTP get request to github.com slash Anson Fong, right? And on the back end, it's going to see that I'm trying to access this route. So it's going to get all of the public data or private data, right? If I'm logged in, it's going to show me everything that I can see from my authorized account. But if it's a public, if, if I'm a, like a guest or if I'm someone else, then it's going to show everything that's public, right? And now if you click on repositories, since I'm, since this is my account, I can see all of my repositories, private or public. But if I was logged out, I would only see the public ones. Okay, so pretty much hopefully that gives you guys like a brief understanding of how uh, like these HTTP requests work. Basically, every single time you visit a link, visit a route, open up something in your browser, you are making an HTTP GET request. Okay, and that just means you're requesting something from a server. And then in response, the server may or may not give you something back. Okay, most of the time it should give you something back. All right. So first, let's create a variable called const express. We're creating a variable called express, and we're just keeping a constant. So we're going to require express. So we're just requiring the entire express module. OK. And now I'm going to create a variable called app. And I'm just going to invoke this express 
with parentheses. So the express module itself, it's 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 actually a high it's actually a, a function that you can invoke. And this what it does is initializes your application for you. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and install something called env. If you've seen my previous Discord tutorials before, Discord bot tutorials, you'll know exactly what .env is. But .env is a module that will load environment variables into the process.env property. Okay, so this is very great for keeping, you know, our credentials, storing our client secrets, and all, all kinds of stuff. So let's first create a .env file in the root directory. So remember, the .env file is not in the source folder. And I'm going to go ahead and say port. And we're just going to use port 3000. Basically, this is the port that we are going to listen to request to. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead up here and I'm going to require the env module and call the config function. So now I can actually reference these environment variables. So I can reference this port variable by doing process.env that port okay and the reason why i want to do that is because i'm going to create another variable called port and essentially what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and say let this port equal to process.env.port or if that value is undefined like if that environment variable is not set we're just going to use port 3030 by default or we'll use 3001 okay so if I don't have .env and if I don't have this port environment variable set up, this value is going to be undefined. When I say set up, I mean like it's not set on my uh, computer, right? which it's not. Okay, and if it's undefined, we're just going to use port 3001. You want to do this because when you're deploying your application to let's say Heroku or Amazon Web Services, there's a chance that you might not always get access to port 3001 because uh, so there's some application that might be using that port. So the best thing to do is to assign it process.env.port and let the instance itself take care of giving it a random port. For example, Heroku, every single time you deploy a web app, it's always going to use a random port every single time. But you never realize it because the domain itself masks it. Okay. All right. So now let's actually start listening to uh, requests. Let's start up our server. So let's do this app.listen. And we're going to pass in port as the first parameter. So that's the port that we want to listen to. And this takes in a callback function as the second parameter. And we're just going to send a message to the console. And we're just going to say, now listening to requests on port, port. So I'm using uh, template template syntax, template literals, and string interpolation. Okay, these are not single quotes; these are backticks. Okay, in this part, I'm using string interpolation to get the actual value of the port constant. Okay, so now I can put a semicolon there, and let's go ahead and just write up a simple test script. I mean, not a test script, but a a script. I'm going to write a dev script and make sure you have nodemon installed. So just do npm install nodemon-g. That will install nodemon globally. And it's basically similar to the node command, but the only um, there's a lot of other things you can do with it. But the major difference is that it will restart changes. It will restart your process every single time you make a change to your application. So this will save us a lot of time when writing our code. So we're going to nodemon slash bot.js or slash source slash bot.js. And we're going to create a start script. And this one is just going to use node. Okay, so let's save this and let's actually run our bot. So right now, watch this. If I go to, if I go to local host port 3000, notice how this is going to keep on, uh, it's going to keep on loading. It's going to keep on, yeah, it's going to say it can't be reached, right? Because our local host is not listening to requests on port 3000 yet. But if I run our process, if I run our uh, process, uh, what's going on? Oh, I'm so used to writing my Discord bot. I'm so used to my Discord bot tutorials. That it's app.js and not 
Pod.js. Okay, sorry about that. And there you go. Now listen to request on port 3000, and you're going to see that if I refresh, it's going to say cannot get. Right? The server is listening to requests on port 3000, but we just cannot get this route. Okay? Because we have not handled requests on that slash route. Okay, so now that we've started up our server, what's next? Okay, well first let's just handle a simple route so we kind of get an idea on what Express really is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say app.get and I'm just going to pass in the slash which is going to be the main route. Okay, so for example, github.com, right, this slash, that's the main route. Okay, but then we can start passing in other parameters into the route to target certain paths that we might want to uh, access. And I'll show you guys how to do that in just a sec. But on this route, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the route we want to handle. So that's slash. Okay. And then we're going to pass in a callback function. So we're going to use an arrow function for that. Okay. And essentially what this callback function is, is the handler, it's the request handler. Let me zoom in a little bit. So you have two parameters, right? REQ is basically short for request and RES is short for response, okay? REQ is the res request object. Res res response is the response object. Whenever you make a request to a server, you're always going to have these two objects in any framework that you're going to use to handle the request. Okay, so the request object contains information that was passed in through the request. So things such as headers, um, cookies, uh, the content type, authorization token, all kinds of stuff. And the response object is used for sending a response back. Okay, so let's say, for example, if I want to send a response back to port 3000 or uh, not port 3000 the slash route the home route we're going to do res okay and we're going to do not send and i'm just going to say hello and we're going to leave it like that now if i refresh you're going to see that it says hello see how that works we make a request to localhost 3000 right on the home route, like the slash, and then we get hello in return. Now what happens, let's say for example, if I, if I wanted to access something like uh, localhost 3000 at, let's say, uh, dashboard. Right now if we do this, it's gonna say, can I get dashboard because we do not handle this route. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we can handle that route by simply adding another app.get. We're gonna call the get function and we're gonna pass in dashboard. So what we're saying is, look, whenever people make a get request to slash dashboard, dashboard, we're gonna go ahead and use the callback function to handle that request. And we might wanna send something back to the, to the, uh, the front end. So we can do something like res.json. So we can send JSON if we want to. And we can say msg, good. And then status 200. Okay. Now, if I go ahead and refresh, you're going to see that we get JSON back. See how that works? Pretty cool, right? Awesome. So, if you're new to building out applications, this is going to be very naive to you. But don't worry, throughout, we're going to be doing this over and over and over again. And I'm going to try my best to explain everything to the best of my ability. Okay. So, hopefully, this makes sense. I'm going to continue this video, uh, this video series in the next uh, video. So I'll see you guys uh, in that part. Peace.